Hey guys, thanks for joining today. We're gonna to be talking about what vehicle gets PIP. So I got a nice little layout here. We're gonna be giving lawyers citations so they can catch up if they wanted to do some more light reading, if you guys wanna call it that. So what vehicle gets PIP? I get this question all the time. Abe, this person was on, we're gonna go through them with all these weird, wacky types of vehicles. But the bottom line is, if somebody's in a motor vehicle, what is a motor vehicle, right? If somebody's in a motor vehicle, they define it as any self-propelled, okay? If you guys ever watched Fred Flintstones, uh, Fred, uh, well, the Flintstones, Fred Flintstone drove with his feet. That is not a self-propelled vehicle. That is a vehicle that someone has to move, right? So self-propelled vehicle with four or more wheels. Motorcycles, not included. We'll talk about motorcycles because there's some exceptions to that rule, but Motorcycles not included with four or more wheels, which is licensed for use on the highway. So I'm just gonna circle some, underline some keywords here. Any self-propelled vehicle with four or more wheels, licensed for use on the highways, okay? So that includes, this statue was written a million years ago, a sedan, a station wagon. I haven't seen one of these, although I think they're come, making a comeback. Jeep type, they called it, Jeep type. We call those SUVs now, right? When I think of a Jeep type, I'm thinking of the Jeep Wrangler, but it includes SUVs and pickups, okay? A commercial motor vehicle, they defined it as anything that's not a private passenger vehicle. So if it's self-propelled, has four or more wheels, is licensed for use on the highways, then it is covered under PIP, okay? It's a vehicle, motor vehicle. Now, they have two exclusions, mobile homes and mass transit. They define mass transit as more than five passengers. So think of um, like a, you know, like a, like a bus, right? So a bus, consider that, okay? Not not a not a van. A van is a self-propelled four wheels, licensed for use on the highway. This is more mass transit. You're talking about mass transit, like big uh, buses, okay? Greyhound buses, stuff like that. So they, they exclude a different Florida statute, excludes school buses, limousines, and taxi cabs. Okay, they do not need PIP. They do not qualify for PIP um, in those situations. So now we're gonna go through some weird scenarios because I got a work comp attorney who calls me all the time. And every time he calls me now, Sam, did you watch this video? I'm not gonna name any names, but uh, Uber or Lyft. So let's see, Uber or Lyft. Let's go through here. Uh, man, I'm doing the a dance, okay. Uh, Uber or Lyft, is it a self-propelled vehicle? Yes. Four or more vehicles? Yes. License for use on the highways? Duh. Uh, usually those cars are, right? The problem with Uber and Lyft is it's an insurance policy um, that's not made for private passenger motor vehicle. It's a almost like a taxi cab, right? So they do sometimes have PIP and sometimes they don't. And they go through these weird phases where they offer it and they don't. Um, it also depends Uber or Lyft about the insured. So let's say I'm the driver of an Uber or Lyft, okay? And if I use Uber, I'm also talking about Lyft, okay? So I'm, uh, I'm a driver of an Uber car, okay? Uh, practicing law is getting hard. I'm Uber driving at night and uh, I get into an accident, okay? Regardless of fault, remember PIP has nothing to do with fault, is that driver covered? So the driver usually has their own policy with Infinity, Geico, Progressive, whatever. They're gonna say, hey man, we didn't insure you to drive people around all day and be on the roads for eight hours a day driving around. You're operating it as a taxi cab and they're gonna cancel that person's PIP benefits, cancel their policy and give them back their money that they paid and say, we're not covering this loss, okay? So Uber or Lyft may have their own insurance policy, right? So Progressive, Geico, they're gonna tell the driver, hey man, we're not paying you. Uber or Lyft may provide coverage, they may not, okay? Now, if I'm a passenger in the car, I still get to go through my own PIP insurance because I own my own vehicle, I have a resident relative that I live with, or, um, or the other rule which I'm having a brain fart right now, but that, we'll cover that in another video. So if you're a passenger, you still get to go through your own PIP and go through that qualification process. If you're the driver, you're gonna have a tough time. I always suggest mailing bills out just in case. So let's see here, we got a F-350, F-350, Self-propelled vehicle, yes. Four or more wheels, yes. License for use on a highway, yes. That would be covered under PIP under most circumstances, okay? 18 wheelers. Let's check out 18 wheelers. Motor vehicle, 
means any self-propelled. Is it self-propelled? Yes. Four or more wheels? Yes. License for use on the highways? Yes. And it includes private passenger. It's not a sedan, not a station wagon, not a Jeep. Commercial motor vehicle. Anything that's not here. So yes, a, an 18-wheeler is a, a license required to carry PIP. Now, sometimes they have work comp. Sometimes they don't have uh, any insurance if you uh, drive an 18-wheeler in Miami. But as far as weight goes, there's another Florida law regarding uh, commercial vehicles and weight. And there's a case, if you're a lawyer, City of Newport Ritchie versus State Farm. And that held that they are required to carry PIP and that there is no uh, weight limitation. Okay? Dump trucks, same situation as the 18-wheeler, self-propelled, four more vehicles, licensed for use on the highway. Yes. Heavy machinery, is it licensed for use on the highway? That's always my first question. And some of the heavy, heavy duty machinery, like your um, cranes and your tractors and stuff like that, do they have four wheels? If it's a tractor, obviously not. And um, it's not like, they're not generally licensed on, uh, for use on, on the highways. Um, I've never seen a, 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 a heavy machinery on a highway. Now, um, I wanna turn around this way to go over scooters. Uh, scooter means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Okay, you have your Vespa scooters for my friends out there who like uh, Luca or Lucas, whatever that movie is, that Disney movie, the Vespa scooter. You've got your mobility scooter. You've got your Lime and your Birds, which is those um, rentable scooters that you can get uh, on like downtown Fort Lauderdale, downtown Orlando. They're everywhere. They look like garbage in the streets. Uh, so a scooter means a lot of different things. So um, the Florida law does not cover motorcycles. Let's just start with that because motorcycles only have two wheels, okay? A scooter, you could be considered a pedestrian, okay? Pedestrian. So a Vespa, you could be considered a, a, a pedestrian. The legal standard for many, many years has been 49 cc's, the motor type 49 cc's. Um, the courts, and it was actually a case that our firm handled down in the Keys because there's a lot of guys in scooters down there. Um, that, you know, they rent the scooter for the day and they get an accident. So 49 or less, it's considered a moped. This was many years ago. If it was 50 cc's or more, it was considered a motorcycle. Motorcycle, no pip. I'm going to draw a line here. No pip, okay? Um, pip, maybe. I'll put a maybe here. And then I'll, that's like iffy. Yes, 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 no. Maybe, this one's like a maybe. This one's a no, okay? Now, a Vespa scooter, if it's 50 cc's or more, forget about it. If it's 49 cc's or lower, you have to ask, is it have, does it have the ability to be self-propelled? Um, I'm sorry, not self-propelled, but yeah. Um, does it have the ability to be manually propelled with your feet, okay? Um, so if it's a Vespa, Nobody's driving, you know, when I say Vespa, I'm not talking about the brand. I'm talking about that type of a scooter. Nobody's self, nobody's going to propel that with their feet, okay? Um, now, mobility scooter, that is also a no. There's no PIP. It's not licensed for use on Florida highways. So Vespa, maybe, I'm going to draw a question mark there. The Lime and Bird scooters, it's just like a board uh, with a stick and a handle, and you can rent it on an app and drop it off in the downtown areas where they're at right now. Um, could you self-propel that? I'm, I keep saying self-propel. Could you propel it manually with your feet? Maybe. I've never been on one. I'm guessing maybe. Um, I don't think anyone would. And they don't have motors, so that you don't even get to this. So I don't think there's PIP on this, but we'll, we'll, let's, let's look at the analysis, okay? Um, is it self-propelled? Yes. Does it have four or more wheels? No. So that doesn't count. License for use. Are they a pedestrian, though? That's the question, because... Uh, we don't even hit this because a pedestrian who's hit by a motor vehicle or in a motor vehicle accident does get PIP. I honestly don't know the answer to this. There hasn't been any case law since I've seen it. Um, if they have the ability to manually propel it, then yes, but there hasn't been any case law on it. I've never ridden one, so I actually have no idea. Um, motorcycles, there are there is no PIP. Golf carts, is there PIP? Let's see. I have a golf cart that I can drive on the road. I have a license for use on the highways. Mine is um, uh, four or more wheels. Yes. Self-propelled. Yes. So there's two types of golf carts. The ones that are street legal with a license plate, you can get PIP on it. Do you have insurance? 
on it. They're gonna say, the first thing the insurance company is gonna say is, hey, you didn't have it on your policy, so we're not gonna give you uh, coverage. I don't think most people have auto insurance on their golf carts. If it's street legal, you should have it. We'll see, I don't know. <laughs> now you got me wondering if I have uh, PIP insurance. I'm gonna call my carrier and add it right now. Um, but for most golf carts, we just drive it around the neighborhood, so I don't have insurance for it, but I do have a license plate. Um, so, so you do need insurance for a golf cart if it's street legal and you're driving it on the streets. You need to have PIP insurance, but it would be covered if you pay for insurance, specifically registering that VIN number, there will be coverage. ATVs, ATVs are not licensed for the use on a highway, so that's obvious right there. Utility vehicles, not licensed for use on the highways for the most part. Um, if it does have a license plate and it's licensed for use on the highways, then yes. Okay, so hopefully that helps the work comp attorney who calls me all the time asking me weird scenarios because he deals with a lot of work comp and these guys drive all sorts of vehicles. So that's the analysis. These are some examples right here. I don't have definitive examples. Well, the Vespa we know, is it 50, 49? We know that. The Lime or Bird, we're not sure about. There's been no court cases on it, okay? And then also, um, think about it like this, the Lime or Bird, if there is PIP, you're gonna go through the qualification process they may or may not have PIP. So uh, that's a question mark. This is a question mark depending on whether it's street legal or not, okay? So thanks for tuning in and that is what vehicle gets PIP. Thanks for tuning in.